Better turn that recording on. Thank you. <laughs> we just went through a couple review problems um, from last week. Um, and now we're going to get into the new material for this week. So this week, we're going to do the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Now, the fundamental theorem of calculus part one was kind of weird. It, it, it's, it's so easy. It's like you take the derivative of an integral, it just crosses everything up. Now, the, the fundamental theorem of calculus part two is where all of second semester calculus comes from. Um, if f is continuous at every point on AB and f is an antiderivative of f on AB, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx is equal to f of b minus f of a. This part of the fundamental theorem is called the integral evaluation theorem. So what we're going to be able to do tonight is we're going to be able to find the value of any, the area under any curve, okay? And this is what it deals with. So if they gave me, let's say, they gave me the integral from 2 to 4 of x squared. What this is saying is if I take the integral of this, well, the integral of that is pretty easy. It's x to the third over 3. Now we don't put the plus c's in there anymore. When we're, when we're finding a definite integral, we do not put plus c's in there. And then since I took the integral, what I always do is I always put a straight line here and I put these two numbers in there, two and four. Okay. This straight line means that I've taken the integral. Okay, I've taken the integral. And now what this says, this is my a value, this is my b value. So, the, and this is, if this is small f, this is large f. So what they're saying is f of 4, because this is my value of 4, minus f of a, which is 2, that gives me my answer. So f of 4, if I put 4 in here, and I'm not going to work this out because it's not going to turn out really nice, minus 2 to the third over 3. If I work that out, that will be my answer. I should work it out. So 4 to the third, I guess it's not that hard. So 4 to the third is 64. So this is going to be 64 thirds minus 8 thirds. So if I subtracted that, what do I get? 50, um, 56 thirds. That is the area underneath that curve. The exact area. This is, this is exact. So now I want to do a problem like this. Something where we... Can figure it out by hand. So I want you to find, this is your job, I want you to find the area underneath the curve y is equal to 2x plus 1 from 0 to 5. So how would it be written as an integral? It would be written as the integral from 0 to 5 of 2x plus 1. But we know that the integral of this is just the area underneath the curve. So if I was going to solve this thing, you know, I'd graph it out. 2x plus 1, so that goes out to here. I'm starting at 0. So this is 0 here. What is the height at 0? It's 1. And it goes all the way out to 5. Well, what's the value at 5? Well, if I put 5 in there, 2 times 5 is 10. That's 11. So if I wanted to find the area here, this is a trapezoid. This is 1. This is 11. So this would be 11 plus 1 times the height, which is 5, divide by 2. So that's 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 5 times 6 is 30. The area underneath this curve is 30. So the integral from 0 to 5 of 2x plus 1 is equal to 30. And we did this already, probably like the second week of this semester. We used geometry to find the area underneath the curve. Now, I want you to use calculus. And we better get the same answer. So the problem is exactly the same. It's 0 to 5 of 2x plus 1. Well, I have to take an integral. Well, the integral of 2x plus 1 is 2x squared over 2 plus 1x. I draw my line because that shows that I've taken the integral from 0 to 5. This reduces. So it's just x squared plus 1x. So I put, so my answer is going to be f of 5 minus f of 0. So if I put 5 in here, 5 squared is 25 plus 5. That's 30. 
minus f of zero. Well, if I put zero in here, zero plus zero is zero. My answer is 30. This is how we find the area geometrically. This is how we find the area using calculus. We get the same answer regardless of which method we use. Now, where is this method? This method works really nice if you have linear functions. If I gave you x squared minus 3x plus 5, good luck trying to find the area underneath that using geometry. It's not going to work. However, using calculus, you could find it easily. All I have to do is be able to take an integral of the function. So that is where the fundamental theorem of calculus part B comes in. It tells me that if I take the integral and if I did f of b minus f of a, I get the area underneath the curve. That is what we're going to be working on for the next three weeks, is being able to find the area underneath all different types of functions. Okay. Does that make sense? The fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Okay. So being able to find the, and this is called an indefinite integral. Let me, let me tell you the difference between an indefinite integral and a, a definite integral. This is a definite integral. Okay. This is what they call definite integral. And why is it a definite integral? Because you're finding an answer. You're coming up with the area underneath. Now, an indefinite integral is when they give you something like this and they'll go x squared plus the square root of x. So you're just finding the integral. And a definite integral means that there's numbers and we are going to come up with the area underneath. If it's an indefinite integral, we're just finding the integral, just like we did last week. We didn't find any indefinite integrals. We just found, or we didn't find any definite integrals. We found indefinite integrals, which we just found the integral. So this week, there's going to be numbers here. So that means we have to find the definite integral. So what I want you to do is I want you to use or try as best you can to find the area underneath this curve of x squared plus the square root of x. Now, I don't even know what the, the graph of this thing looks like, but I do know that I can find the area underneath it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just let you work for a little bit, see if you can find the area underneath that curve. Yes, my mic is off and I'm sitting here yapping away. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what I did is I plugged this in, I plugged this function into my calculator because I didn't know what the graph looked like. 
it looks almost like a quadratic, I mean, just x squared plus the square root of x. So yeah, I know, it's, like, it's crazy. Um, so I'm not sure if the area is one or not, um, but you know, it sure looks like it could be. So now I'm gonna take the, the integral. So that's gonna be x to the third over three plus, well, the square root of x is x to the one half. So if I add one here, I end up with x to three halves over three halves from zero to one. So I'm gonna simplify this out. Um, x to the third over three does not really simplify at all. Um, but I'm gonna rewrite this as two x to the three halves over three from zero to one. Okay, so I'm gonna plug one in here. One to the third is one. So that's gonna be one third plus, oh, f of b minus f of a. This should be a minus sign, shouldn't it? Oh, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm plugging one in there. Okay, so I get one third plus, and if I put one in here, that gives me two thirds. Okay, minus, and then I'm gonna put zero in here. That's zero, that's zero. So one third plus two thirds is three thirds or one. I agree 100% with you that the area underneath that curve is one. Very nice, excellent. All right, next problem. Here's another one. Okay, I'm gonna let you work on it and see what you get, but obviously you know what you're doing. So um, this one should be, it. I think this one's a little bit easier, um, but check it out. I'm not gonna turn off my mic this time. That way I won't forget to turn it back on. letter C. Okay. I just plugged it into my calculator and this graph looks something. And again, you don't have to plug these into your calculator. I always just like seeing what they look like. So it goes up and then it looks like it comes back down and then goes back up. And we're finding it from one. And I think one is right about here on my graph to two. So it's like, I'm trying to find this area underneath this curve. So it looks like there's a little bit of negative and it looks like there's a little bit of positive here, but we don't even have to, we don't even care about that. I mean, all we have to do is use fundamental theorem calculus and it gives us the answer. So four X to the fourth over four, which is nice because those fours crossed off, minus six X squared over two, which breaks down to three. So I've got X to the fourth minus three X squared from one to two. If I put two in here, two to the fourth power, two times two is four, eight, 16. So that's 16 minus four times that's 12. So I've got 16 minus 12 minus, and then I have to plug one in here. So that's gonna be one minus three. So I have 16 minus 12, which is four minus one minus. So that's gonna be negative two. So that looks like six. That is absolutely correct. Letter C is correct. Whew. So that is fundamental theorem of calculus part two. Now, this is where, you know, obviously these are some pretty easy problems. <laughs> Next week, when we get to substitute the substitution method, you are gonna have much harder problems and it's gonna take a little bit more th than this. But right now, the only thing that you can really find an integral for is using that using the power rule. So they, they will start off easy, but next week when we do substitution, they get, they get much harder. All right. Oh, here's another one. All right. So I'm going to let you work on this one also. The integral from negative one to one of three over x squared. 
pretty different answer there. Letter C again, all right? So in this problem, since I have an integral from negative one to one, I'm gonna rewrite this as three X to the negative second power. Because uh, yeah, anytime I have something on the bottom, I wanna bring it to the top, unless it's X to the first power. If it was three to the X power to the first power, you don't bring it up. And I'll show you why um, in just a bit, because that's one of our integrals that we'll learn. Um, so if I add one, so that gives me three X, to negative one over negative one, which is just uh, three, negative three over X, integral from negative one to one. So if I put if I put one in here, I end up with negative three minus, if I put negative one in here, that's three plus negative. So that gives me negative six. Oh, I didn't get C for that. Hmm. Let's see here. Now, this is where looking at my calculator, I'm going to, I'm going to put the graph in here because I, I could have made a mistake there. So I've got three over X squared. Okay. So X squared. So my graph looks like, oh, that does not look like it would be negative six for an answer. <laughs> so I'm, I'm looking at, oh, negative three, Okay, so where did I make my mistake? Yeah, because I'm looking at the graph and the graph looks like this. It looks like this. And then on this side, it looks like this. So I know that this area and this area, um, that is, well, that doesn't seem like it would be, oh, because it's negative, negative one to one. That doesn't seem right. Zero does not seem right. Huh. Interesting. Unless, my, unless I graph this wrong. Three over x squared. Huh. That does not seem like zero for an answer. Just by looking at it. Okay, so you. Huh. I don't have the answer key. Oh, oh, this problem. Well, we shouldn't even have this problem yet. Um, why did I square it three over X squared? Uh, so that's negative three minus, that would be three minus three. Yeah. Um, yeah, <sighs> but it shouldn't be. Um, this is one of those ones that we shouldn't even have yet because we have a, this is an asymptote here. So all of this area in here, yeah, we, this is a, this is not a problem that we should have yet. This is one, this is more of a BC calc problem because it keeps going up and up and up and up. So this one would be solved separately. You'd have to split it into two different problems. That is not... <laughs> No, I don't think so. Oh, no, I don't know. This is just a practice problem that I, I pulled out of some place. But yeah, just by looking at the graph. Now, I would have gotten negative six. If I was doing this problem, I would have said the answer is negative six, um, not zero. Um, but just looking at the graph, it doesn't, I mean, being underneath the, underneath the x-axis is positive or negative above is positive. But this one has, uh, it has what we call a vertical asymptote, which is going to make it incorrect. So I would say that the answer really is E. It's non-existent. You can't find it because that area is going to keep adding up and up and up. But don't worry about this one. Not on there. All right. Take a look at these. 
These are um, these are the integral rules that you need to know. You might want to run them down. This is the one we learned last week. Okay, we only learned one last week. However, now we have a bunch of them. This is natural log. Uh, if you have the integral of one over x, the integral is natural log of natural log of absolute value of x plus c. If you have e to the k, um, so let's say I gave you let's let's do some examples here. So if I gave you this example here, this would be the integral of let's say x three x squared. Okay, so if we take the integral, this would be 3x to the third over 3, which reduces down to x to the third. So an example of this one, if I gave you the integral of, let's say, 3 over x, if you take any time you have an integral or an x on the bottom, x to the first, not x to the second or x to the third, just x to the first, this is going to be just 3 natural log of x plus C. I should have put a plus C on this one. That three just stays on front. Okay, that doesn't do anything. If it's a 10, that would be a 10 in front. If it was a 30, it would be a 30 in front. It just stays on front. But anytime you have an X, that's what you get. Now, E to the K X over K. So if I gave you the integral of, let's say, E to the three X, the integral of that is E to the three X over three. Now, you can check yourself. Remember, if you take the derivative of this, you should get this, right? That's, that's why you should be able to go frontwards and backwards. You should be able to take the derivative, then you should be able to go back and take the integral. But that's all it's saying, is if you have something like e, the integral of e to the 3x, that is just going to be e to the 3x over 3. If you have sine or I'm sorry, if you have cosine, so if I gave you the integral of cosine of 3x, your integral is going to be the sine of 3x over 3 plus c. And remember, again, you can take the derivative of this. The derivative of sine of 3x is cosine 3x times 3, which would cross off that 3, which would give you cosine of 3x. So these are all functions that you should be able to go forwards and backwards with. If I give you the integral of the sine of 3x, that is going to be negative cosine 3x over 3, this number here. Now, I don't care if you worry about these. These we don't have to worry about. But um, And the secant also is one that I don't care if you worry about. These here, you have to know them especially for next week because next week when we get into substitution you have to know all of these well you're going to need to know them this week also but all we're doing is we're working backwards so for example if i gave you the sine of x and i said what's the derivative of that the derivative of sine of x is cosine of x so doesn't it make sense that the integral of cosine of x is sine of x and if I gave you the sine of 3x, then we'd have to use the chain rule, okay? So that would be cosine of 3x times 3. So if we go backwards, and this, is, this will be where we get into it next week, but that's where we end up getting our derivatives from. So you should be able to go, you should be able to take a derivative of a function, and then you should be able to take and go backwards. Okay, they, they work both directions and that's where kids start getting messed up. They start thinking, oh, am I taking a derivative or I'm taking an antiderivative? Okay, so let's try a couple practice problems. What is the integral of e to the negative 3x? Okay, what's the integral of that?
e to negative 3x over negative 3 plus c. That is absolutely correct. Okay, now, this is what is called an indefinite integral. So now, if I took it to the next level, I could say, okay, what is, and this would be a definite integral. So now I would take the integral here, so that would be negative, or e to negative 3x over negative 3, from, that should be a negative, from 0 to 1, and then I'd put 1 in here, so that would be e to negative 3 over negative 3 minus, if I put 0 in here, e to the 0 is just 1, isn't it? So that would be my answer. And this is what you leave. You don't, you don't have to get a calculator out and get decimal answers. You just put that in there. But this is where it gets a little bit more complicated, right? You put one in there, e to the negative three over negative three. Oh, that should have been negative three on the bottom. Sorry about that. And then if you put zero in there, negative three times zero, that's zero e to, or anything to the zero power is one. So that's where I came up with that. So that and this, so this is new this week, and so is this. So you should be able to find, use, you should be able to find definite integrals this week. Okay, how about, what is the integral of cosine of x over two? Uh, two sine of x over two plus c. Uh, is that right? So this would be, I would rewrite it out as cosine of one half um, x. So then if I take the integral of that, that's going to be sine of one half x over one half, which becomes two. <laughs> you are absolutely correct. Very nice. And plus c. Okay. So those integrals that I just gave you, you just have to, I, I would put them on a three by five card. So you have them in front of you. So when you're doing your problems, you can just look back and say, okay, what is the integral of e to the three X and all that? Okay. So those important things. All right. How about these? What is the integral of the sine of X DX and the integral of e to the two X? Negative cosine of x, I agree. Yep. And letter F is e to the two x over two. Correct. Very nice. Now this is a problem off of this week's assessment. Okay, it wants you to find the integral from 0 to 14 of 10 e to the x. Now, time there's a number in front, you can just bring that out front of the integral. You don't have to. Um, the number doesn't do anything. So if I was going to solve this problem, I would just go, now I, I usually don't put the 10 out in front. Um, I would just take the integral here. So this is going to be 10 e to the x. There's no number in in front of that x, so that's it, from 0 to 14. Now, plugging 14 in here, I'm not going to multiply that out. That's a crazy number. So my answer would be 10 e to the 14th minus, and then I put 0 in here. Well, if I put 0 in here, e to the 0 is 1, so wouldn't it just be 10? So this would be my answer. I'm not plugging this into a calculator, because this number right here is going to be huge. So I just leave it like that. 10 e to the 14th minus 10. This problem is on your assessment this week. And so is this last one. Now, most people are not going to get this last problem correct on the assessment this week. And the reason is a lot of students, they don't think about what's going on here. Okay. An integral, I will, I will tell you on that assessment where you have to find the definite integrals. The last problem, there's two parts. There's two, par there's two parts to it. You can't use integrals. 
okay? This problem here, I'm looking at it, there is no integral of an absolute value. However, I do have skills to solve this problem. I know that 2x, the absolute value of 2x minus 6, what does the graph of that look like? Okay, so I know that I can graph an absolute value function, and I know that the graph of it is going to help me out. So what does the graph of that look like? Do you know? A V-shape, yep. Okay, I agree with that. Okay, but where is it? I mean, where is the, the V-shape on that graph? Starts at negative six? I'm not so sure it starts at negative six. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure it starts at negative six. I'm trying to, I don't know if I can, I forgot where the absolute value function is in, in the calculator. I have a pretty old, I have a TI-83, so this one's really old. <laughs> um, I'm just looking for, I know the absolute, oh, I think it's under math, because I want to, I want to grab this thing out. Do you have a graphics calculator by any chance? Oh, Desmos is a great place to put it in. Okay. Oh, you have a TI-84. Awesome. Um, remind me in a couple of weeks that I need to show you how to find integrals on your calculator. Okay. Because it, it, it is a, you do need to know how to do those um, on the AP exam. Okay. Okay, so I'm, I'm just going to go into Desmos. I think I can, that's 2x minus 6. So realistically in this problem, the whole, the whole thing, usually um, if, I, if I give you a problem like this, if I gave you x plus 2 squared, you should know that this is a quadratic and since it's a plus sign, it shifts the graph two places to the left. So this would be my graph. Well, this is a minus sign, so I know it's going to shift the graph to the right. But since there's a two in front of here, it really is only going to shift it three places, I believe. And then it's going to be a V-shape. OK. So now I'm trying to find the area underneath this curve from 0 to 4. Okay, and I'm looking at this and I look at it and it's like, oh, okay, it's just two triangles that I'm going to add together. Um, that shouldn't be too bad. So I just put zero in here. Two times zero, zero minus six. So the absolute value of uh, negative six is six. So this point here is six. If I put four in here, two times, two times four is eight minus six is two. So I know that this value here is two, all right? So here I have a triangle, base is three, height is six, 18, so this is nine. Then here, this base is only one, height is two, one times two is two, so this area is one. Nine plus one is 10. There is no integral of an absolute value. So if you ever get an absolute value function, the first thing you really should do is graph that thing out. And then you should be able to find the, the area underneath that curve by hand. And that's, that is what I was trying to get across in that last problem. I wanted to make sure that kids still understand that all we're doing is we're finding the area underneath the curve. Now, if I gave you something like the integral from two to four of three X to the fifth minus two X, there's no way you're going to graph that thing out and find the area underneath the curve. That's where calculus comes in. But the concept is still the same. The concept is you're finding the area underneath the curve. So if there's a function that you don't know what the, what it is, how to take the integral, if you can graph it out, 
and it's just straight lines or you can find a geometric area underneath it, that always works. Okay, so when in doubt, sometimes you want to graph the thing out, take a look at it, and if you can find the area just by piecing it together, that's what you want to do. All right, that is it for today. Any questions on any of that stuff? All right, you should have access to the assessments now. I did, I did give you access to those, so you should be on your way. Have a great evening, and hopefully we don't get all that ice tonight. It isn't open yet? I thought it was. I thought I went in and opened it. Huh. Maybe I have it linked to the wrong. Okay, let me let me check here. Oh, why is there a little triangle on there? Oh no, you should have access. Okay, let me go back. Let me go in and see if I, I didn't link it right. Okay, so week five assessments. Huh. Let me go back here. I have to see what I have the folder linked to. Oh, I have a link to quiz number five. That's not right. Um, okay, so let me change it to quiz number four. Hit submit. Okay, could you check and see if you have access to it now? I had it linked to the wrong quiz. And you might have to, okay, all right, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank goodness we got this figured out because I would have been, uh, I wouldn't have known what kids were saying that they didn't have access to it. Yep, I had it linked to the wrong thing. Okay, all right, next week, we're gonna be doing substitution much, much harder. <laughs> Don't wanna scare you, but it definitely is a more difficult week next week. All right, have a great one. <laughs> Bye.